Here we have Mark Stafford. Welcome in. Good afternoon, New Zealand, and welcome to the Inside All for the Lions DHL series. Thanks for lending us your ears and invade your eyes. I'm joined in the studio by two New Zealand sports broadcasters in his natural habitat down in Wellington, Grant Nisbet, and a man who's got more stats on the field than off it. Mark Stafford, how are we, fellas? I'm batting well. I'm going well. Nisbo's looking resplendent. G'day, Ant. The DHL Lions safari led by Warren Gatlin kicks off this week. How exciting is it? Oh, mate, for me, it's really, really exciting. I can't believe how late in the piece they've left it to come to New Zealand. This, This is the rugby mecca, and they've got the gall to turn up two days before their first match. I think it's outrageous. I mean, this this tour has been in, in planning for years, and it really has. And I've, I've been lucky enough to meet a lot of the management who have been put together a couple of years ago. And I tell you what, they're pretty organised. I think they'll be a far better organised outfit than they were in 205, which wouldn't be difficult. Um, and I guess they'll be judged by what happens on the field, and we don't know, do we? That's correct. Has uh, Warren Gatlin selected the right side for this tour? Yep, I think so. I think so. He's been pretty brutal, hasn't he? I mean, he's gone with a lot of blokes that he knows through Wales. He's gone with uh, the two teams that were best in Europe during the Six Nations, Ireland and England. And um, he hasn't gone with too many Scots. Yeah, the Scots did pick up some good wins in the Six Nations and some really good performance. I, I actually think they need to bring in a quota system for the British and Irish Lions, um, similar to what um, South Africa had. Um, just to get a bit more balance and a bit more fairness. Yeah, any surprised omissions? I see Dylan Hartley, he got left out, the captain of England, and also uh, Christian Wade. Christian Wade, for me, is the one that um, they need to score tries here. If they're going to beat New Zealand, they need to play New Zealand-type style because British rugby won't beat <clears throat> New Zealand rugby, and I, I can't believe they've left Christian Wade at home. This, but what, what about you? Dylan Hartley, could he be a loss? Could he be called up? Oh, he could be called up, I suppose. No, he'd be a liability. I mean, we all know that he's, uh, he's a bit of a hothead. Uh, I'm sure he would have liked to have come back, good Rotorua boy and all that, but uh, uh, they'll be looking for discipline on this tour and yellow cards and what have you. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't think we'll miss him greatly. I think the hookers they've got in place are pretty good. Christian Wade, yeah, good player, but I tell you what, um, they've got plenty of good finishers in this team. Don't worry about that. Is versatility important for Gatlin going into this tour? When you're talking about versatility, boys, you're really only talking about a few different positions. You, you know, you, you can't be versatile in the front row. Uh, you're unlikely to be versatile in the locking area. You can't be versatile as a halfback. So really there are a few places, and, and I think with 41, um, they're pretty much covered in specialist positions right across the board. Yeah, it's going to be an intriguing <laughs> tour. You know, Gatlin's, uh, especially with Gatlin's connection to New Zealand, um, he did say in a reference uh, that his side needing to embrace the Kiwi culture and understand it and be prepared for it. Does that mean on uh, Friday night or Saturday night they go out out on Whangarei to the Mongrel Mob HQ and enjoy a few uh, big bots of Leon Rouge? I'll be really disappointed if they don't show up at the Green Parrot in Wellington. I really will. Okay. I'll tell you what, boys. The big, pl- the big plus from the Lions' point of view is that Gatland is a Kiwi. He understands Kiwi culture. He understands <laughs> Kiwi rugby. Um, you know, he was an all-black. He played a million games for Waikato. And that is that is their biggest plus, quite frankly. He knows how the country works. All righty, heading out to the All Black squad there against Dame next week. Um, Grant, can you give us some wisdom around that? Who gets left out? Look, I, I don't think there'll be too many surprises, but in a squad of 32, you know, there might be the odd one, but you talk about the midfield, I, I just think we're pretty well covered, aren't we? I mean, I mean, our greatest strength, as we know, and it's a real cliche, this, is our depth. I think there's only going to be one new cat uh, in the initial line squad, and that's Geordie Barrett. I think Jack Goodhue will be safe for the Northern Tour. Unless his injuries prior, I really only see one new cap. And what about Damien McKenzie? Mm, I'm not sure about him, Nisbo. I don't know if there's going to be room for him. Uh, depending how big the squad is, maybe there'll be a little bit of room for him. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, I, I, if it's a really big squad, I, I suspect he'll be in there. But I think we all agree that Bowden Barrett, if he's fit, will play. Now, I mean, with the greatest respect to your man or two, mate, um, staff, Cruden, he's not much use off the bench. Uh, so that's where versatility comes in, and, and that's where you maybe look at a guy who can, uh, who can double up. I mean, Cruden's a first five and a first five only, so uh, you're looking on the bench normally for versatility, and that's maybe where a guy like McKenzie comes into the play. I'll give you another little wild card, uh, depending on how things go in the next couple of weeks, is uh, Milner Scudder. Mm, yeah. um, you know, he, he is a proven winger at that level. And then you throw Naholo and, you know, you start throwing all those names out and uh, there's really an embarrassment of riches. We're going to have a bet, right? 
We've got to have a beer. Yes, we are, mate. So I'm, I'll am i kick it off, all right? Three of the Super Rugby teams are going to have All Blacks. They're not going to beat the All Blacks. I'm touch and go on the Māori game, but I think three of the Super Rugby teams will tip them over as well. So I'm saying four or less for the Lions at 4.75. I'll put my 20 tailor on that. Yep. Well, a man is very yep. wise and he's got a lot of uh, logic and reason behind his... Um, Behind his statements, I guess. Um, Nisbo's going with five wins at three seventy five. That's twenty dollars on the nostril. And um, I like to punt with my nuts. You know, I'm a bit of a rogue young buck. And, and um, I understand your commando today as well. hundred percent. I'm not wearing undies. I left those in my gym bag. But um, I'm going to go for the biggest winning margin versus a Super Rugby side. And I think that the Highlanders are going to absolutely blitz the Lions. They're paying twenty six dollars. Believe it or not, uh, I get that. I put that on the nostril. Um, Liam Squire might be back. Sops is going to be playing out of his skin. You know, Twinkle Toes, Liam Sopawanga. Yeah, nice. So you're saying the biggest margin in all of the Super Rugby games is the Highlanders beating the Lions by plenty. Yes, that's correct. $26. So you get 520 That's juicy, isn't it? Gutsy stuff. Yeah, it is very gutsy stuff.